Hiya, uh, I'm Zob, and this is gonna be a little bit more of a late back video, a commentary in a sense, because I just want to go over the things I think about the fixed TF2 protest and its upcoming future. You see, I usually don't voice my opinions in the news series that I have been running, because it's supposed to be objective and unbiased, but having done nothing but reporting for an entire month, oof. I have been gripping my chair handles from cringe sometimes, trying not to go crazy over some of the things I've seen happening during the protest, or a lack of things going on as well. I finally want to speak up. So here are my two cents on the topic. The absolute first thing I want to say is something that's been driving me crazy for the past three weeks. Where were all of the bigger TF2 YouTubers during the protest? The astonishingly low amount of content on YouTube related to the fixed TF2 protest, so where TF2 gets most traction, was just a shocker to me. I thought that some content creators would try and fire up the community more, post about it here and there, but in the end, the entire protest revolved around the petition alone and the eventual arrival of all of these petition signs to Valve. It was a pop-in and pop-out type of situation. Tons of YouTubers made a statement regarding the protest, then they stay silent, and perhaps posted some content unrelated to the protest, and that's it. Of course, I'm not blaming bigger TF2 creators for not engaging with the protest. Fact is that these people have their own lives and things to take care of outside of YouTube or Twitter. I'm just severely disappointed that the community as a whole was asked to share things about the movement, and then the ones that could have brought the most attention to it were all quiet. Still, about halfway into the first week since the start of the movement, I feel like people kind of felt it was over. This, of course, goes back to the defeatist mindset that's been spreading like hell in the community. Staying motivated in a scenario where a product you considered important to yourself is being mistreated, and all you can do is watch the chaos unfold doesn't really help. That's exactly why I have been posting daily. Since I am just a random idiot on the internet, the best thing I thought I could have done was spreading the word of the protest. And here I am, overworked, dead, tired, and barely alive, but alive. No matter, I'm glad the movement stayed afloat, and that the petition was definitely a success, that the bots are gone, somehow, even though it was clearly not the effort of the community that did that. The main factor that played into fixed TF2 staying relevant was just the persistence of the community for this protest not to become a second safe TF2, even though I feel like it was headed that way. Community protests are great and all, but chaos clearly ensues when there's no governing body in that sort of informal group. Chaos that's caused by a lack of proper direction to be headed in. And yes, this is a community-driven protest, but let's be honest, the influence of the safe.tf page and generally the organizers, so Wheezy, Shork, and the What Show, had, have had a huge influence over how the protest ran, and I hope to see them take a more proactive approach before delivering the petition signs. As far as the community is concerned, the protest is going to run at least till August, so when the petition signs are going to be delivered to Valve's headquarters and... Yeah, no clue how's that gonna work, but let's just hope Shork and the team have a plan and it'll make Valve rethink the way they treat TF2. Uh, there was little to no coordination between the organizers of the page and the allies of the protest, that being bigger YouTubers who could have spread the word of Valve's mistreatment of TF2 much easier than smaller YouTubers within the community. It was mildly infuriating that just at the beginning everyone hopped on to spread awareness of the protest and then it was just kind of a waiting game. What will Valve do? Something or nothing? At that point of the protest, there was just small things going on. Other games publicly showing support of the protest, a hypothetical joint of TF2's and CS2's communities, and, well, smaller content creators still uploading videos about the protest, which I am grateful for with all of my heart. The fact that the fixed TF2 protest, first week onwards, was carried by smaller content creators and the community non-stop posting the tag on Twitter just kills me inside. The organizers themselves were clearly busy with their personal projects and weren't focusing on spreading the word of the protest much. Of course, initiating this protest must have taken a lot of time and thinking through, but in the end I feel like it could have been much more effective. I don't want to go on as to how all of this could have been handled. There's no reason going over that as what's done is done. Focusing on the things that are up ahead of us is something that's probably a better choice overall. The future of the protest being a boycott. So now, I'm gonna try to persuade you into not spending a cent on TF2. 
Valve keeps pushing whatever they feel like into TF2 and it's clear that they don't give a shit. It makes me very sad to see a company that I have always held in high regard, even called myself a big fan of it, make the most uncomprehensible decisions. Uh, sure, there's barely any cheater bots on casual and then that's great. Whilst, yes, this is great, this also means that when the summer update drops, people are going to be more likely to spend money on the game. Well, let me run you through something that is a little unconventional. Here's a graph depicting supply and demand within an economy, in this case, TF2's economy. The x-axis represents the quantity of demand for specific items, in this case, keys. The red line represents the demand for these items, dictated by us, TF2's player base, the consumers. The y-axis represents the price of these specific items, once again, keys. The green line represents the supply of these items, which is dictated by Valve. Within a real economy, it works a little different, but to simplify this as much as possible, in this case, the supply of TF2's keys isn't restricted by the fact it's a real item. It's a virtual item. What this means is that Valve doesn't actually need any resources to produce these items, as they are of limitless supply. In this case, as consumers, our demand for keys strictly dictates the supply, aka how much Valve will earn from this. With events like seasonal updates, Valve is trying to stimulate demand, in turn making money, by presenting the community with a new set of nice looking cosmetics that will certainly look great on your loadout, so why not try and unbox them? This rule applies to pretty much every other item on the Manco store, also MVM tickets. Our competence as consumers, and as players of this game, is to dictate whether buying keys in order to unbox these awesome new crates is worth it, given the treatment that we have gotten from Valve. Why spend money on TF2 if Valve treated the community like shit, doesn't hold any sort of contact with the community, didn't make any statement related to the recent ban wave, and most importantly, left us in this hellhole that was TF2 until just recently. Now, I am of the very strict opinion that we still need a boycott. Period. Right now. And guess what? I'm doing it. I'm not spending a cent on TF2. I don't care. You can do it too. It really doesn't take much. If you can abstain, do it. Look at the facts once again. Valve left this game to rot, yet somehow there's still an active player base keeping the game alive. And what does Valve do about it? puts the absolute minimal effort by releasing community-made items to a community starved of any sort of proper content updates since 2017. It's an endless cycle, one where Valve wins no matter what. This, this just has to stop. Unless, somehow, by some miracle, Valve will actually release something bigger? Or actually make up for all those lost years, maybe apologize even. Sure, just then maybe it's worth putting cash into this money shredder that TF2 is. It's a fool's wish, but I want to believe in miracles. Having observed this protest for the past month, even though the status quo has changed and the bots are not an issue as of the moment, we're still kinda in this position where nobody knows what to do. This is once again a consequence of the lack of any leader running the protest, or a group that could create directives for us, the masses, to follow. Zesty beautifully summarized it in the best way possible, Valve fixing the bot issue before the summer update without actually responding to it in any way kinda, kinda messed up everything. I dreamed of Valve actually taking care of the bot situation and here we are, it happened, but when it did, I think nobody really expected it. Now that they have done something about it, and some community members are seeing Valve through rose tinted glasses, the demand for the upcoming summer update items will be high. Of course, each to their own, you do you, but from a logical standpoint, would it make sense to engage in mindless consumerism and hop on the summer update bandwagon only because Valve is taking action now, just now, after all of this time? So this has been my rant. I finally got to yap about this a little bit. And since I'm allowed to do this here, I want to thank all the people that commented on my videos with words of support, people who actually ran discussions in the comments section, and everyone who messaged me on Twitter or informed me about any developments related to FixDF2. Thank you. I want to believe that with enough perseverance, we can actually do something. Thank you. Peace.